<laughs> Live action adaptations are a dime a dozen these days. It feels like every beloved animated movie from the past is being reinvented in live action for modern audiences. <laughs> And Christmas specials are no different. Sometimes it works, like Jim Carrey's The Grinch. And other times, you get... The live-action adaptation of The Year Without a Santa Claus. Yes, this is real. Something I didn't even believe in until it was brought to my attention last year. What's good, dudes? I'm Dylan the Dark, and last year I made a movie review about the 2008 made-for-TV stop-motion special, A Miser Brothers Christmas. I had a lot of fun making it, and it was the first video I made that YouTube actually allowed people to see. And a lot of you informed me that this live-action movie exists. And boy, I wish I stayed in the dark about this one. I'd like to apologize in advance for the shit quality of the footage. The entire movie is free to watch on YouTube, but the quality isn't the best. But it's better than actually paying for this turd. So let's not waste any more time. You all have asked for the live action Miser Brothers review. And just like Santa on Christmas Eve, I'm about to deliver. So the movie opens with a beautifully colored title screen of red, green, and shit baby barf mustard puke diarrhea yellowish brown. Delightful. Merry, Merry Christmas, a Merry, Merry Christmas for all good girls and boys. Can't you see the Christmas tree? Its star is shining brightly. Can't you see it's gonna be a Merry Wait a minute. Merry Eddie Griffin? What are you doing here? He's not the only famous face in this movie. John Goodman plays Santa, and he does a great job like always, even with the bad script he's been given. So the film opens up on some Santa expo in which all the toy makers and sponsors gather to show off their wares, kinda like the comic con of Christmas. And Santa can't help but feel like Christmas has lost its meaning. Sparky, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the market and the Christmas futures, so you wouldn't understand that. No, oh, why would I understand anything about that? I'm only Santa Claus. Yeah. What's that? Your opening remarks. I proof it on myself. Don't bother to thank me. You're welcome. Santa's in the house, y'all. Where's my Christmas party people at? It's good, right? Yeah, I know it. The shorties better be good, because this totally Santa Expo is going to be off the hinges, yo. Yeah. yeah. Sparky? I don't really have to say this. Come on, Santa, get with the times. Now hit the gritty, old man. Yeah, but is this really Christmas anymore? I felt. Um, no. It's quite lovely. Dude, did he just feel her up? <laughs> Looks like you're getting canceled for Christmas. Do me a favor, put the device on. These are sample clips from the games we'll roll out over the next year. See, wasn't that fun? Looks like you're having a great time. All right, next booth. I guarantee this will be the breakout doll for the 6 to 12 demographic. Be gods they rock, yo! She's got little holes in her eyebrows. Be gods Baking in black! Techno oven. So hot. Whoa. How am I supposed to deliver all this stuff? Santa, you just delivered the first Begos doll. The parents buy the rest. Well, that's a heck of a thing to do to hardworking family. How about we get you a snack? Goths already ruined Halloween. Now they're coming for Christmas? That's it. Cancel our contract with Hot Topic. So it seems Santa's not feeling so holly and jolly this year. And his wife, Mrs. Claus, tries to cheer him up. I want you to look. Go on. Oh, there's a whole world full of people down there who love you. So then we meet two of Santa's elves, Jingle and Jangle, and they overhear that Santa is officially fed up with all the disrespect. No matter what you give these kids, it's never enough. Next year, they want something newer, bigger, faster. Be goths. And I defy anybody 
to find me one child that really cares about the true spirit of Christmas. So Santa demands a child to be brought before him, and Jingle and Jangle set out to bring that child to Santa, dead or alive. We're then introduced to Iggy, a kid whose dad is the mayor of a small town called Southtown. After all, I'm not just your dad. You're the mayor too. That's my boy. Remember, son, what do we say about our vacation funds? It's not taxpayer money, it's daddy's money. That's my boy. Alrighty, see ya, son. Don't tell your mother about my mistress. Iggy, you know your dad. Sometimes he just makes promises he can't keep. We then go back to the North Pole, where the Weasley CEO elf is hatching a seasonal scheme. Wow. Wait, genius migraine. Hold on. I have an idea. What's that? What if we postponed or rescheduled Christmas in July? Why does Christmas always have to be on December 25th? What is so great about that date anyway? I'll be honest, I kind of like how this movie handles its commentary about how the real meaning of Christmas is lost in modern day materialism. It's actually not handled as poorly as you'd expect, so at least there's a tinge of effort thrown into this movie. One thing I don't care for is how they reduced Mrs. Claus's role in this movie. In the original Year Without a Santa, Mrs. Claus was a major player in what was going on, often taking matters into her own hands. Here, she's just kind of a background character. Which sucks, because I like when we see more of Mrs. Claus in Christmas specials. I feel she too often gets overshadowed by Santa. So, it's finally time to see the Miser Brothers. And... I'm Mr. Icicle, I'm Mr. Tenderloin. Friends call me Snow Miser. Whatever I touch turns to snow my clutch. <laughs> I'm too much. Holy shit, this really is crack and weed miser. I'm Mr. Green Christmas, I'm high on weed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the misers. Good god, they look horrible. He looks like a 50-year-old man who hangs out at college parties and hits on underage girls. You may recognize Heat Miser's voice as his actor, Harvey Firestein, voiced Yao in Mulan. Nah, <laughs> Firestein. I see what you did there. Their song on this is just inferior. The more rocking sound can't compete with the ragtime sound of the original. Also, why are their minions now beautiful women? I liked the little minions more because they added more charm to the misers. I always imagined the misers just created them out of their own elements and modeled them after themselves, which is fitting for their characters. I mean, what, did they hire these women? Did they make them? I don't know, man, does anyone really even give a shit? Gosh, this feels so empty, too. I mean, just look around. There's not much happening. Look at how much open space there is. <sighs> the TV budget is really showing here. So, Jingle and Jangle finally land in Southtown and begin their hunt for the perfect child. Where'd you get those? You know how many clothes designers want to sponsor multidimensional elves? There's a lot about my thought process you don't know. He does look fly, but his Air Santas are still fake. Toys used to be a lot more fun and simple. Now they're goth. Why does Santa hate goth people so much? They all obsess over a Christmas movie. So why the resentment? So there's a subplot about Santa wanting to retire in this retirement village for mythical creatures, and it doesn't really go anywhere. It's brought up a couple times, but nothing's really done with it. Santa never really tries to go there, it's just kind of a thing he obsesses over. Their sleigh gets vandalized, which I think is kind of funny. And they find Iggy at his school, and they wait for him outside, and ask him to come with them without his parents knowing where he'll be. Uh, oh thank god, here comes a teacher. You're a Greek goddess, aren't you? Isn't that a salad dressing? Shut up. I tried to hide my radiance under these sporty ensembles, but sometimes it just shines through. <laughs> I like this character. I dig her confidence. Trying to make booty calls on the clock. That's too much booty. booty. Wait, did he really just say booty call in a Christmas movie? Oh, Eddie, your talents are wasted here. 
Santa then learns that Jingle and Jangle are missing and sets out to find them as the two elves continue their pursuit of the boy. Bit of that Christmas. So Jingle and Jangle try to win the kids over by playing arcade games. Okay, that's bullshit. You never win tickets for playing Arctic Thunder. Here you go. Enjoy. That's all he get is a yo-yo? That's it. All right. That's actually kind of funny. Now do you believe we're Santa's elves? No. But I believe you guys are amazing at video games. Yeah, no shit. Playing a video game doesn't equate to you being Santa's elves. We cut back to Santa as he visits the Miser Brothers, who are having a boxing match? <laughs> What is happening? Damn, I, I need some cracker weed to get through this. So Santa decides to lay down the law after watching his assistant get miser molested. But the misers don't prove to be very helpful. In order to get them to cooperate, Santa summons their mother, a business casual mother nature? Seriously, what the fuck is happening? So then some shit happens with the family. I don't know, I didn't watch this. The elves then find Iggy and have him help them rescue their reindeer who got taken to the pound. How'd you find me? Christmas magic! Just kidding, we chipped you. So your dad seems like a really nice guy. He's the best. Problem is... He's the worst. Santa then finally arrives in Southtown and comes across a look-alike. Really, fella, if you're gonna wear the suit, try and take some pride in it. Button those buttons. Tuck in that shirt. Come on, man. Put your dick away. I know lots of kids. Millions of them. <laughs> Santa, I wouldn't post about that. So Santa is finally reunited with Jingle and Jangle. I'm the man. Yeah. So they just kind of walk around, and a woman mistakes the real Santa for a charity Santa and gives him some money, which leads to this scene. What's your charity? Yeah, homeless shelter. Yeah, I'm living there till they finish renovating my mansion. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You know, a lot of the kids from the shelter can't wait for your visit tonight. Aw, it's actually a really touching moment. Having an adult immediately recognize the real Santa and reminding him of what he means to children is really endearing. Alright, so there's actually a crumb of Christmas goodness in this movie. I specifically asked for a boy's bike, and you brought me a girl's. I was a bit of a tomboy in those days. <laughs> You're Rachel Stevens, aren't you? As I recall, you were quite small at that age and a boy's bike would have been unsafe for you to ride. So, I brought you that dark blue Schwinn with the green handlebar tassels because I thought maybe the colors might make you happy. How did you... Wow, that's another great little moment of genuine Christmas spirit. Santa accommodating her Christmas bike when she was a child is really nice because it shows how much he cares about each and every child. Damn, two good little moments back to back. Not too shabby. He what do you want for Christmas this year? I mean, a PS5 would be cool. Dude, it's 2006. So Iggy tells Santa that he wishes for a true white Christmas, and Santa visits Heat Miser in order to barter with him to allow him to let it snow in Southtown. It's weird, though, because we only see him talk to Heat Miser, not both Misers like in the original. Why did they skip out on Snow Miser? He only appears for the phone call. I guess for time. But, to be honest, the less he's on screen, the better. Ooh. He finally gets them to cooperate after threatening to summon their mother again. And you don't want to fuck with Mother Nature, man. She'll shove those branch fingers up your dickhole. So it turns out Sparky is trying to become the new Santa, and now this is going to be a big shock. He's trying to take over Christmas! What made the original so organic is that nobody was trying to steal Christmas away. Santa was just legitimately fed up and decided to take a holiday. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, who cares? Why even Why even compare the two? Seriously, just fucking whatever. Oh God, first they were protesting because they wanted the right to choose, and now this. 
And then Santa arrives! Yay! Can this be over? Thank you. No. Thank television. <laughs> Not for this crap. So it snows in Southtown, and thousands of people who have never driven in snow create the most car accidents the town has ever seen. It's gonna snow, ho, ho, right here in Dixie. <laughs> Our town's history began when it was built in 1875. Okay, real talk. Do you guys hear how this guy sounds like Tom Hanks in this scene? Why, to the North Pole, of course. This is the Polar Express. A new development. Right here. Right, right in the heart of Southtown. I think this speech is over. For the rest of the holidays, I'm no longer the mayor. So Iggy's dad declares anarchy rules in Southtown, and Santa delivers the toys as usual. Haha, <laughs> we're two people playing a single player game. Seriously, look at that. They are controlling one car. And then, thanks to Heat Miser, everyone in the North Pole gets one day out in the sun. And with that, the special comes to an end. And so does my suffering. So what can we say about this special? Aside that, for a movie called A Year Without a Santa Claus, this movie has a lot of Santa Claus in it. You know how in the original it was mostly about Mrs. Claus doing everything? Well, in this, Santa is the driving force behind almost everything. He travels everywhere, engages with the most people, and the story largely follows him around. Kind of a misleading title there, guys. But the misleading title aside, this has no reason to exist. Nothing about it is that great, and the few moments of actual Christmas goodness can be felt all in just one of the songs in the original movie. Also, there were no songs in this special. You know, in the original, there were a lot of catchy tunes they could have... Ah, Mr. Green Christmas, I missed this... <sighs> okay, you know what? Never mind. It's for the best they didn't even bother, and I'm not gonna bother to talk about this shit anymore. <sighs> so there we go, I finally spoke about the live-action Miser Bros movie. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to everyone who looked forward to this video. The fact that so many people actively wanted me to talk about this has really made my Christmas all the more magical. So thank you. If you want to support the channel, please like, share your thoughts in the comments, share the video, and of course, subscribe to my channel for more fun. Typically, I review horror-related media, so please check out my other videos if you liked this one. I also livestream horror games with my girlfriend on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're a lot of fun and are great if you just can't play horror games yourself. If you want to go the extra mile to support me, I'm trying to save money to afford a VR headset for playing scary VR games live. You don't have to if you don't want to. Just watching this video is more than enough. So once again, thank you. And thanks to my girlfriend Tornado. She sat through this movie with me multiple times and helped me write a lot of the jokes in this video. Thanks, Dirty. Alrighty, I think we're good here. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy fucking Holidays, and if none of those cover you, well, I'll catch you on the flip side. The elves then find Iggy and have them help. The elves then find Iggy and have them help him re. Fuck. The Iggy's. <laughs> so Santa's. <laughs> fuck. So Santa is finally reunited with Jingle. Oh no.